Hello, I'm David Chaston. We're here today to launch a new and very useful resource for readers, especially those of you who have had a business overdraft facility. For many years, we've had basic information on the site about business overdraft rates and the facility fees that go with them, but today we're extending this by launching a tool that can show exactly how your business overdraft is costing you. I'm joined today by uh, Terry Hayden from Cashflow Funding, and our new tool not only shows you how much you're really paying, but it also shows you how much you could save by changing the way you look at your working capital funding needs. Thanks for joining us today, Terry. Perhaps we could start by describing how business overdrafts work and what are all the bits and pieces that banks use to charge people. Well, hi, David, and thank you for being on the program. Uh, there are basically three separate bits or elements that go up to make a, an overdraft funding facility cost. Uh, many of those today are not quite as easy as found with technology as they were in the past. The, the three basic elements are the base cost, the margin, and the line fee. And to explain those, really the base cost is really a cost that is the bank's cost for raising its own funds, administration and monitoring of those funds, plus a margin. And on top of that, of course, they had a margin which takes consideration of the borrower's specific industry, their own credibility. And when you add the base rate and the margin, that is the rate you generally see on the bank statement of the borrower. Yep. And that is the rate you pay for what you use. Right. What is not so clear is the line fee. The line fee is a fee that's charged on the facility, whether you use it or not. Mm -hmm. And that ranges from between 1.2 to 1.8 per annum, or a flat rate specifically. And obviously has quite an effect on the cost, on the overall yeah. cost, true cost of, of the overdraft facility particularly if you don't use 100% of the facility. Right. Now, um, is there a difference in um, working capital facilities between what's based on the company's assets and what's based on, on real estate or uh, the security on real estate? Is that, does that make a difference? Well, we believe it does. Um, from our perspective, uh, we're short-term lenders. Working capital is very much a 30-60 a day roll. Um, and from a lender's perspective, you expect to get paid within mm. that period. Uh, our security regime is over the, uh, the current assets, uh, or liquid assets, which are generally debtors, work in progress, and stock. And rather than using fixed assets that the banks use, which is usually outside the balance sheet, we prefer to use the assets of the company. Those particular assets, work in progress, stock, and debtors, are quite hard to secure. But we've developed, using our experience and knowledge in the industry and technology, um, a smart piece of IP which satisfies our requirements that we are very secure in that element. So from our perspective, right. we think it's cheaper yep. to borrow yep. using the assets of the company. One of the, one of the things that um, perhaps some businesses might worry about is, is giving up that communicational control over the debtor's ledger. Do, do you have to give that up? From our perspective, no, and we've learnt from experience and knowledge that um, our main concern is that our clients have the ability to manage and control their current assets. Yep. That's our security. Yep. Um, we expect them to uh, administer and manage good business practice, which gives us confidence that we can on lend. However, if there's a situation that they may need to uh, get their business practice up to the level that's compliant to us, we're more than happy to help, but that would be an added cost. And, and, the, and your facilities, how are they secured? Are they, are they secured in any special way or is it...? We get back to, what I mentioned before, a working capital facilities are, are really a 30, 60 day lend. Uh, we expect to be paid out of the near cash right. assets of the company, which are current assets, debtors, stock, work in progress. And our security, we take security over that. We believe we have got, through that a very smart piece of IP gives us prime security over that, so we're comfortable to match our lending cycle with the expected payment cycle, knowing that right. we are secure over those assets. Right, and if you want to transition to this type of working capital lending from a bank overdraft, how, how easy is that? Is the transition pretty straightforward? Oh, it's no different from just lending from one facility uh, institution to another. Uh, because we're smaller, um, we don't have the hang-ups and we can do it very, very confidently. Yeah, thank you for that, Terry. We, we'll have more detail in the story below, but the important takeaway is that, that there's real money to be saved using a smarter approach to business overdrafts and your working capital funding. 
check out our new tool from the links below. I'm David Chaston from interest.co.nz with Terry Hayden from Cashflow Funding.